Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to the Motivational Summit. I think you'll enjoy this next speaker from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's Larry Feldman. I'm very big on learning. I always want to try to be a little bit better. Um, plus, it's, it's fun to learn new things, not only for what they bring you, but how they bring you to other new things. So this is going to sound a little strange. Um, I'm in synagogue, happen to be Jewish, and the rabbi is talking about something, and I'm scribbling. And of course, my wife says, now what are you doing? I says, I like what he's talking about. I'm going to use it for my classes. So here we are. I want you to understand how important it is not to limit yourself in life, not, not to put a cap on what you're capable of doing. So I want to talk about Mohini and about how to break the chains of conditioning. Mohini was a female tiger that was gifted to Dwight Eisenhower. For any of you that are historically challenged, that was the president after Truman and before John F. Kennedy. And they brought him this tiger. Now, of course, he didn't let it roam around his front lawn. Right? I mean, I, I, I've read that Kanye West actually has an estate where there's like live tigers. By the way, it'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it be, if, uh, if one of those tigers broke loose and ate a couple Kardashians? I, I think I'd actually buy that uh, just to get the bonus DVD. At any rate, he put, him, put her, Mohini, in the Washington National Zoo. Now, back then, TV was pretty limited. You had ABC, NBC, CBS. You had public television. But it wasn't likely that you would see a real live tiger from Africa. There was no National Geographic channel at that point. This would be kind of like if a panda showed up. People lined up around the block and somebody wrote an editorial. And what they said is, why would you put a magnificent beast in a 12 by 12 foot cage? So this is an actual picture of what they built Mahini. I don't know about you, but this is nicer than my spot. I'm thinking of maybe renting a tiger costume and, you know, trying to pick people up. Hey, come back to my crib. There's plenty of room. But she was so used to 12 by 12 that she paced out that same small area in this vast area they built for. How many people do we know, or maybe it's us, that fall into the same trap? They swear they're gonna give up smoking, that was five years ago. They swear they're gonna start going to the gym, or they're gonna do this, or they're gonna do that. We have to break our conditioned boundaries. We have to stop saying, I can't, and start saying, why can't I? Listen. If you look at, at, at some of the successes in history, how incredibly unlikely they were. Penicillin, I asked a few of you, you didn't know. Penicillin was derived from moldy bread. How'd you like to be selling that patent? But prior to that, man, if you got an infection, you could lose your leg or you could die. There's constant, constant examples. Man, read on, uh, up on Thomas Edison. How many failures he had with the filament and the light bulb, which, which changed how we work, how we live, how we study. You have to start saying, I'm going to try it and I'm going to do it. Because I'm telling you, you know what's more important than talent? Attitude. If your attitude is positive, if you put yourself in a mental position where this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it with a smile on my face and if I have a setback, that's just going to motivate me more. You'll be amazed at what you can do. But the first thing we need to do is break our condition boundaries and start saying, why can't I rather than I can't. Make sense, everybody?